You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hi guys, so grateful to be here with you today and I want to share something that was born out of a really good conversation with some of the students in Content Business Blueprint, which is my coaching program and every single week we get together to talk about questions that come up through the program, which teaches how to write and get clients as a freelance writer, Um, but also some of the mindset things that come up because that's such a natural part of business and of stepping outside of your own limitations and doing things you've never done before. And I thought one of the questions was so, so strong and probably relates to, to everyone listening in some way. You've probably experienced this or maybe it's coming up for you now. So I wanna share some of the ways that I work through it and that even the students offered in case it's really helpful to you as well. And what we were talking about was imposter syndrome. So even once you know a skill, even once you have built your website, even once you have done the pep talk and talked yourself up for how amazing you are and how lucky anyone would be to work for you, it still creeps in. There's still sometimes that feeling of why me? Who am I to do this? How do I stand up to everyone else out there? And that's such a normal human emotion. So I want to share a few things that will hopefully really help you um, that help me as well. So the first one is remembering that doubts are completely normal and they're not really something that just go away once you figure out the hack. (laughs) Like the more you grow in business or in your creative pursuit or your passion or your side hustle, you are going to keep reaching levels that stretch you. You are going to keep being confronted with things you've never done before. You're going to keep noticing thoughts that may be holding you back that you never even realized had so much sway over you. So I think the first thing is really just not making yourself wrong for having these questions come up, doubts come up. If anything, it's a sign that you are doing something right. It's a sign that you are trying something new, that you are being brave with your life, that you are being willing to risk how others perceive you or risk even not knowing how to do something and still show up anyway. So just want to congratulate you on that because not everyone even takes that chance to begin with. So one, like not making the doubts wrong, but then two, also kind of reframing them that it probably actually means you're doing something right. But then I want to offer you a way to kind of reframe them. So this is one of the most powerful mindset practices that I have found, but it's spending a little bit of time every day, maybe in the morning before your household is awake, or even while you're still snuggled in bed because it's fallout and it's getting cold and it just feels good to have a few extra minutes in bed. But even spend 10 to 15 minutes just journaling through the actual doubts and fears that you have coming up. You know, everyone has like the feel good journaling and the gratitude journaling, and that's good too. If you've got time, add that in. But also don't forget to spend time looking at those little nooks and crannies of your brain that maybe have those fears and have those doubts. And what I like to do is kind of list them all out, and then I go back and I lovingly reframe each one. So if I have a fear, like people are going to think that my YouTube video is so stupid, (laughs) you know, then I'll go and I'll think, what else could be true? How can I reframe this into a positive that my brain might not even be looking at? So in that case, I might say something like, some people will be inspired by this video. You know, what if people get a whole new idea for their career out of this video? And you don't have to choose something that feels completely unrealistic to you, but choose something that feels either just like a tinge of a stretch, like you could lean into that if you believed it enough or repeated it enough, or feels like it's true for you almost like as this middle ground of just like, 
You don't have to write, okay, everyone's gonna be inspired by my video, but you could write something like, there are some people out there who might be really like my video. And if that feels more true for you, say that and get your brain on board with thinking that way and then lean into those better and better beliefs. All right, because we've talked about this before, but the power of changing your thoughts and beliefs is that that then changes the actions you are willing to take. And then you're willing to show up, you're willing to put yourself out there, you're willing to be a little bit braver, and that changes the results that you get. So all of a sudden, because you changed that thought and you showed up on YouTube, you start to get more followers, you start to connect with more incredible humans, you start to maybe even grow your business, right? If you sit down and write your book or whatever your creative project is, because you've changed the belief that you shouldn't or you can't, all of a sudden pages start adding up and people start seeing your work and this career evolves out of what you've spent time doing, all because you went back and lovingly looked at those thoughts that were telling you, you couldn't, you weren't as good as someone else or leave it to them. Okay, so that's kind of what I really, really love to do when it comes to imposter syndrome is like one, don't make the beliefs wrong. Like two, congratulate yourself for if they're there, that means you're doing something actually quite right and brave with your life. And then three, you don't have to leave yourself hanging. You can absolutely spend a few minutes really looking at those fears and the little cobwebs of your brain, but then giving them a new perspective. And what that does is it almost just gives your brain a different thought track. You know, like if you're used to playing the exact same tapes in your brain and the same soundtracks of the same thoughts, your brain doesn't have anything else to jump to when all of a sudden you're trying to believe something different. So I like to think of affirmations or mantras or anything like that just from the perspective of it's giving your brain a new soundtrack to play. It's giving your brain a new thought instead of expecting it to come up with a better thought and better belief when it has nothing to go to. Like it's really just you inserting a new song or soundtrack for your brain and starting to practice believing and playing that in your head instead of whatever hasn't been serving you to the fullest so far. My friend Keisha Get Mary also has an amazing point on imposter syndrome. And the way she looks at it is she basically says, look, the only reason that you may feel like an imposter in some situations is because you're trying to embody this next higher level. So you can also remove some of the pressure of yourself to have to embody that next higher level. Like what if you just show up and own that this is where you're at, that you're just starting your business, that you are just getting it going, you know, that you are only looking for clients that you can help at this stage. That I think really can do a lot. And for me, I'm someone who always has felt a certain amount of pressure, I think partly because of my corporate background where you really are taught to like sell yourself, you know, and to go into interviews and um, sell your achievements and put the best resume that you can together. And so I think our culture almost breeds a little bit of that imposter syndrome because you just feel like you are always taught growing up in school and in interviews and everything that you should really be like presenting yourself as like the highest potential version of yourself. But I love her idea and her complete reframe and turnaround of like, what if you didn't? What if you literally just said, this is who I am, this is the skills I've got, and then leave it for people to take or leave if they identify with that or not. This leads me to another point with imposter syndrome and something that really, really helped me early on in my entrepreneurial journey. And even now is that you don't have to be able to serve every single person out there. So whatever skills that you have for this stage are right for the humans that you will find or the businesses that you will find who you can still help with the skills that you have at this stage. So if you're a writer, imagine all the people out there, all the business owners who don't know how to write, who don't feel confident in their ability to edit, to proofread, to research, to even know what a blog is, let alone how to create one. You know more than that, right? If you've taken my programs, you know more than that. And so you can help those people. You don't have to go and help people at the times. I mean, you can if you want to, absolutely. You'll know enough to be dangerous, absolutely there. But don't put that pressure on yourself that you have to solve solutions for every single person in the world. You can meet people who really need your help and need your perspective and need what you do know ahead of them now. So if you're a coach, maybe you're a wellness coach, you don't have to go and help the most 
like the world's Olympic athletes, unless you want to. But there are millions of people who probably would love your advice and your expertise knowing what you know now. Go serve them. And then as you grow, you will naturally attract different clients and they may be at different levels or you may find that you just love one space. But almost busting that myth that you have to know everything in the world, that you have to be the top of your field before you can help anyone. That is so not true. And honestly, someone might feel safer getting help by you when you're closer to them and when you can more relate to what they're going through because you just got out of it and you just figured out what will help them and you remember it because it's fresh to you and you can really sit with them and empathize. So I hope that that is encouraging to you because it was to me when I was first starting out in business and just felt like, wow, like, do I need to know more? Do I need another education program? Do I need another certification? All that stuff is great and you will continue to learn and grow your entire career, but you don't have to be ahead of everyone to help anyone. Not at all. And then the last point that I would offer for imposter syndrome, and I want to hear what you have to offer back, like email me, slide into my DMs on Instagram at hi Jessica Johnson. But everyone has such rich ideas around this and ways that they've conquered it. So I'd love to hear, and maybe we'll do a follow-up compilation or something like that. But the last one that I would offer is be your own cheerleader. You are going to have fears and doubts come up as you reach for that next new thing in your life. So you have to almost over index on ways and reasons that you are incredible, that you are qualified, that you are the best person to help. And I would make a list of like 25 to 50 reasons. What you're doing is you're looking for more evidence why that belief is true. So a belief is something that you have simply collected a lot of evidence around. For example, if you believe that you are shy versus confident, you've probably looked for evidence your entire life as to why either one is true. If you were fortunate enough to grow up believing that you were beautiful and you could conquer the world, you probably had a lot of loving family members and evidence in school or elsewhere as to why that was true. And the contrary can be true as well, right? Maybe you looked more to the magazines, you saw them everywhere, the beauty ads, the social media, the photoshopping, and that can really chip away and provide a lot of evidence to the contrary. So what you want to do is really take control of your beliefs and the evidence that you are collecting in either direction. And if you want to believe that you are qualified and you are the best person to help someone because you are, then start looking for evidence as to why that is more true. Start take, collecting every compliment someone gives you, every gratitude that a client shares for the work that you've done. Every time you do a certification or you learn something new or you write something that's badass or you make an amazing website, add that to your evidence, right? Like add that to your evidence as to why you are incredible because there's going to be so much in the world that makes you believe otherwise. So you really have to be the loudest voice in your own head. You really have to intentionally collect evidence that builds your confidence more than the other voices, you know? So I think that's part of imposter syndrome too, is really just being your own biggest cheerleader because there will be so much out there that can make you doubt yourself or can, you know, the highlight reel makes you wonder and question your own abilities and everything like that. But you can be the one that, says that you're amazing, that believes you're amazing, that records every single piece of evidence, every compliment, every praise, and has this like gridlock, like steel belief in herself because you've intentionally built it day after day for years. You've got to start somewhere. So if you haven't been doing that, no worries. There's no better time than today. Maybe keep a folder on your desktop or in your email inbox for whenever someone emails you kind words. Um, go and make that list right now and put it in that folder of all the reasons you are qualified and you are amazing and read it anytime you need. I heard Jamie Kern Lima. Um, she has what she calls a toolbox of these amazing quotes and just reinforcements for when she has a hard day. She goes and she she listens to this toolbox um, and reads through it and just really re-inspires herself. And so that's something that you could do as well, but you really want to start collecting that evidence in all its forms um, as to why you are amazing and why you can do this. 
All right, so that's what I would share about imposter syndrome. It's not something that I've solved, encounter it all the time, but just if it's helpful as we're on this journey together. Again, it's one, knowing those doubts are normal. Two, not making them wrong, but also rather letting them point to what you're really doing right in your life, that they're even coming up to begin with. Three, it's being more open about where you're at so you don't have to even feel like you're stretching to become this imposter. You can just be like, this is where I am. Take it or leave it. The right people will find you. Four is like, you don't have to be perfect for everyone to still help a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And as you grow and as you reach that next level, you will naturally attract different clients with different challenges. But what you know right now is enough to serve a massive amount of humans. And you don't even need a massive amount. You can serve a few hum- humans really well with what you know and book a full business with that. So that's really all you need to think about is who can actually use your skills and who do you are you a few steps ahead of that you can really, really help. And then lastly, being your own best cheerleader, collecting that evidence so that your beliefs grow stronger in yourself and your abilities, no matter what kind of day you have, no matter what you're up against, and letting that be the loudest voice in your head. I hope this is helpful to you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll be back here next week to support you on your journey, whether you're building a side hustle, a business, just looking for more inspiration in your life. Um, I celebrate you. I see you and I'm so grateful that you're here. Talk soon. If this episode resonated with you, I have two things you are going to love. One is a Bright Life workbook full of practices you can use to get clear on what your version of your brightest life looks like and fearlessly move towards it every day. And another is a copywriter starter kit full of beginning steps to create a copywriting business that gives you the freedom to travel the world working from anywhere, to replace a corporate salary as your own boss, and to do creative work that lights you up every day. It's lessons I've learned in creating my own content business, and I'm excited to share it with you if you're curious about doing the same. I will link these in the show notes. I hope these serve you. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you back here next week as we all pursue our biggest, brightest lives together.